Hey guys, JavaScript Joe here. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a Chrome extension using Figma. So I've already created the Chrome extension that I'm working on, but I'm just going to walk you through exactly how I built it, what I did, and some of the basic tools inside of Figma. So hopefully that'll give you a better idea of how to design your own. So first thing I did was create a frame. So if you're new to Figma, you have this frame icon right up here. It's called the frame tool. And you can go here and they've got these predetermined frames. So basically it could be, you know, phone, tablet, desktop. So what I did is I went to desktop and I went to a, just a regular desktop. So you could do MacBook Pro, etc. So that's what you see here, right? So we've got this frame. So then the next step was basically getting a screenshot of a blank tab. So just to walk you through that, so new tab, and then if you're on Mac, which I am, you just hit Command Shift 4, you'll see the crosshair, and then if you hit the space bar, you can take a screenshot of that window, and you'll see this, and then if you just click, it takes a screenshot. So that's what I did to get this good looking screenshot with the drop shadow for the uh, browser window. So the next thing I wanted to do was figure out how big should this container be? So we've got this first component. So on the left, you've kind of got your layers, which is similar to Photoshop or Illustrator if you use that. So I kind of broke it up. So I've got the browser window, which is the screenshot. Then I've got the extension icon, which we'll talk about in a second, and then the pop out, right? So actually let's let's uh, go into the, the extension icon. So all I did here was this is a group, so you can group things together. So I've got an outer circle, which is just the, the clock. It's supposed to look like a clock. And then I've got the clock hands. So if we were to recreate that, you would go up here, you've got your shape tools. We've got an ellipse tool. And then what you're gonna do is hold shift. So that'll give you a perfect circle and then click and drag, right? So I did that, and then on the right side, so this is where we can edit colors, add layers, add effects, strokes, etc. So all I did was I chose a color, it was like a light blue, I think it was this one, and I added a stroke with that color, so I'm going to do that, and then I just brought the fill down to zero. So there we go, and I think the weight, I think it was two or three, no, it was two. Cool, so that's that. And then for drawing the clock hands, you're just gonna go to the shape tools and go to the line tool and click and drag. And so same thing, so this is a stroke, so changing the color. Uh, and then if we zoom in a bit, I'll show you how I made the, the caps end it, or uh, round it. So if we go here, so I'm in stroke, there's three dots, click there, and opens up the advanced stroke menu. So here's where you can do round caps. Boom. So three dots right here. Cool. So that's how I made the extension icon. So I'm just gonna go and delete those. And so then the cool thing you can do is group them together. So all I did here was I put them in a group. So if you select multiple things, if you hit Command G, uh, it'll group them just like this. So we'll lock that, leave that there so we can't move it. Now let's head over to the pop out. So kind of the main main part of the Chrome extension. So I was looking at some of my other Chrome extensions and it looks like some of them vary as far as width. So, you know, that one's pretty small, maybe, I don't know, 150 pixels versus some of the other ones are a bit bigger. So most of them, from my experience tend to be around 350 or so, it appears. So that's kind of what I did here. Uh, so I, if we go inside of this group, kind of got the background, right? So I've got actually 329, it's the exact width. So you've got that. I went ahead and rounded the bottom left and bottom right corners, which you can do that right here. Um, so if you click this, corners independent, just on the right side. So you've got top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. 
So I just changed that to 24. So that allows me to round just the left bottom and the bottom right. So now let's take a look at some of the components. So if we look at the first one, right? So this is just two text components. Um, so I've got, you know, the first one, your current time zone. So we can configure that on the right here and then America Phoenix. And then I group those together so I can move them. And the cool thing you can do too. So let's say, you, you know, you want, I wanted them to align up vertically so I can select two component, two components right here. And then right here, I can align horizontal centers. I can align vertical centers. So it's really helpful when you want to align things to each other. So next, let's go on to the input fields. So we've got the time on the right and the date on the left. So what I did is I created an actual component. So I've been calling these components because uh, that's essentially what they're going to be once I actually build this and code it up. But in Figma, a component is basically like a, uh, it's kind of like a symbol in Sketch. It's a reusable piece. And so if you go down here, the bottom left, you've got your components. So you have that input box right there. So right here, I believe this is the master component. So if I change this, it'll change wherever this component occurs everywhere else. Um, and you can tell by the different icons. So you've got the four squares versus the one square. So what I did is I created a component um, from this one. And then when I wanted to create the date, I just pulled it from that component. So it's kind of like a duplicate. And so that's really nice when you have a lot of re reusable things like for this button, when I need to reuse it later, I could create a component and just pull from that. So we've got both of those and, and that's just made up of a, a container like a box, um, which represents the input. And then I've got text inside of it for the time. Um, and then I've got the label. So actually you'll notice that I did not, um, so this says date, but it doesn't actually have the date. So we're gonna go in and change that real quick. So this is locked, so I'm gonna unlock it. Double click, double click, double click until I get inside. And today is the seventh, so we're gonna do the seventh. Cool, there we go. I'm gonna go back up, I'm gonna lock it so I don't make any changes. And then next, we've got the button. I was really happy with this, so, um, I got the idea from a really helpful moment on Twitter. So this is called Little UI Details and I'll share it in the description below. But basically these are a bunch of little UI details you can implement that will make a big difference. And so I took a look at this um, and basically kind of just copied it, you know. Uh, so you've basically got a, like a linear gradient moving from, so a darker color at the bottom, moving to a lighter color and so I just implemented that in this button. So if we take a look, I'll show you real quick. So right here for fill, what you can do is click here and then up at the top of that panel. So originally it was solid. I clicked linear and then you can choose two different colors. And so you can do hex, RGB, HSB, CSS. And so I did HSB. It looks like Figma might have changed it to hex, which is totally fine. And yeah. So that's the button. So it's just made up of this uh, box where the corners have been rounded, 32 for the border radius, and then I group those together. And then the last piece we have is this link, which is just text. And there you go. So that's, that's basically it. Um, the cool thing, so once you actually start building something like this, if you are a developer, uh, so like with the button, when I was creating that, as a React component, all I had to do is go click on the button, go to code, uh, change this to CSS, and then actually change it to the code, and then I just copy this in. Super handy, super quick. And yeah, there you have it. And so if you want to export this and show it off, you can click on the frame. If we go back to design, down here, export, click the plus, and then usually I do 4X because that's higher quality and then export it.
Oops. Oh no. Looks like Figma has froze on me. There we go. Okay. Cool. So we'll just call this Chrome extension. And whoa, it's a large file, 14 megabytes. Open it. And there you go. There's your Chrome extension. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.